Before you start throwing devastating knees and elbows from the Muay Thai clinch, it's important that you understand the fundamentals of the position. In this section, I demonstrate how to properly wrap your hands around your opponent's head to achieve the Muay Thai clinch position, as well as demonstrate a couple of ways to secure the position as a counter to your opponent's strikes. When studying the subsequent techniques, it's important that you pay special attention to how I grip my hands together around my opponent's head. I use a variety of grips, such as the hand over hand grip, the hand over fist grip, and the cross arm grip. Understanding the significance of each grip and knowing when to employ a specific grip is key. Another important aspect of the Muay Thai clinch is the positioning of your elbows. Whenever you gain control of your opponent's head, you always want to position your forearms in front of his shoulders and pinch your elbows together. This prevents him from shooting in for a takedown or ducking underneath your arm and closing the distance into your body to secure a body lock. If you neglect this section or don't spend time practicing the basics, you will struggle with the technique demonstrated in the following sections. Here I am showing you two different methods for controlling your opponent's head in what is referred to as the Muay Thai clinch. The first is the hand over hand control. To assume this position, wrap one hand around the back of your opponent's head and then cup your other hand over the top of that hand. The second control that I employ is called the hand over fist control. To acquire this position, you want to make a fist with one hand, positioning your thumb and index finger flush with the back of your opponent's head and then cup your other hand over the top of your fist. With both of these controls, you want to keep your elbows pinched together and your hands positioned high on your opponent's head. The former makes it extremely difficult for your opponent to escape the position, while the latter allows you to pull his head down with ease. If your elbows are loose and your hands are low on your opponent's neck, then he will escape the control and you'll be back to square one. It's important to note that neither control is better than the other. Choosing which control to implement is a matter of personal preference. I will frequently flow back and forth between the controls as shown here. If you plan on mastering the clinch, then you should include both forms of control in your arsenal. Sometimes it can be difficult to pull your opponent's head down using the previous grips. If you are fighting someone that has a strong neck, then employing the cross arm grip as a means of breaking his posture is an excellent option. To assume this control, position one arm across the back of your opponent's neck so that the blade of your wrist is cutting into the back of his head. Once you have accomplished this, grip your hands together so that the palm of your lever arm is facing away from you. For example, if you have your left arm wrapped around the back of his neck, then you want your left palm facing away from you and your right palm facing towards you. With your grip intact, pull down on your lever arm with your right hand, forcing your opponent's head down. As you break his posture, you can throw a knee to his midsection or face. If you want to control your opponent's head to set up more attacks, then transitioning to the hand over hand or hand over fist control is your best bet. In this situation, I counter an overhand punch by transitioning to the Muay Thai clinch. To execute this technique correctly, you want to block the strike using the outside of your forearm. It's important to notice how I intercept the strike by stepping my lead foot forward. This not only puts me in range to secure head control, but it also prevents the punch from reaching my face. If you try to catch the punch and then move forward into your opponent's comfort zone, then he will land the strike and you will fail to tie him up in the clinch. The instant I secure the clinch, I immediately pull my opponent's head down and throw a straight knee to his abdomen. In order to be successful with this technique, you have to execute the block, the transition into the clinch, and the knee as one fluid movement. If you stammer between movements, your opponent will defend against your attack. The 
This technique is similar to the previous technique in that I am using an outside block to counter my opponent's punch and then tying him up in the Muay Thai clinch. But instead of countering an overhand right as I did in the previous sequence, I am countering a lead hook. All the same rules apply. You want to meet the punch with your arm while breaking the distance into his comfort zone and wrap your blocking arm around the back of his head. Before he can defend, wrap your other arm around his head to secure head control. The instant you establish control of your opponent's head, you have the option of throwing a straight knee. It's important to notice that as I close the distance to intercept his strike, I keep my opposite arm at eye level to protect the side of my face from counter strikes. In this section, I demonstrate several attacks that you can implement from the Muay Thai clinch position. As I mentioned in the beginning of the fundamental section, in order to implement your attack from the Muay Thai clinch, you have to first break your opponent's posture by pulling his chin down to his chest. The best way to accomplish this is to apply downward pressure to the back of your opponent's head the moment you gain control of it. A lot of times, he will get caught off guard when you wrap your hands around the back of his head, making it easier to break his posture and set up an attack. If you hesitate with this transition, your opponent will most likely counter by tightening his neck and straightening his posture. To help you deal with this situation, I provided several methods for breaking your opponent's base so that you can create openings to attack. show you how to throw straight and side knees from the Muay Thai clinch. To begin, I throw a straight knee to my opponent's abdomen. Notice how I curl my left heel toward my left buttock. This allows me to drive the point of my knee into his stomach. Also notice how I pull my opponent's head down into the knee. Now I throw a side knee. It's similar to the straight knee, only here I am bringing my leg up diagonally and striking the side of my opponent's rib cage. Again, I am pulling my opponent's head down and landing the strike with the point of my knee. The straight knee can also be used to target your opponent's solar plexus. To execute this technique, you want to elevate your knee off the mat and then thrust your hips forward while pulling your opponent's head down. You also have the option of throwing the strike to your opponent's face. Here I show you how to string your knees together to form a combination. Notice how I not only target his midsection and head, but also his leg. By throwing knees to all areas of my opponent's body, I create more openings to attack. In this situation, my opponent has wrapped his arms around the outside of my arms and grabbed my head. To counter his defense, I latch onto his right elbow with my left hand and then shove it to the right side of my head. With the right side of his body open to strikes, I throw a left side knee to his ribs. Notice how I grip my left hand over my opponent's right shoulder and use my right hand to pull down on his head. This not only pulls him off balance, but it also adds power to the knee. When executing this technique, it's imperative that you cup your hand over your opponent's elbow. If you form your grip high in his triceps or low in his forearm, then moving his arm will be hard to manage. It's also important that you throw the knee the instant you redirect his arm. If you lag, then your window of opportunity to land with the knee will close. Again, I have secured the Muay Thai clinch and my opponent has his arms locked around my head. To create an opening to attack, I extend my left arm straight to the ceiling, wrap it around my opponent's right arm to secure an overhook, and then throw a left side knee to his abdomen. Notice how I yank on his arm with the overhook while pulling down on his head as I throw the knee. This not only pulls my opponent off balance, it also increases the power of the strike. Notice that when I do this technique at real speed, I secure the overhook and throw the knee simultaneously before my opponent has the opportunity to free his arm. If you stall, then he will free his arm and defend against the knee.
This is another situation where my opponent has his arms wrapped around my arms in an attempt to nullify my attacks. To counter his defense and create an opening to attack, I release my right collar tie, maneuver my right arm underneath and around the outside of his left arm, and grip my hands together around the back of his head. At the same time, I shrug my right shoulder into his trapped arm while circling my body toward my right side. The combination of these actions forces his left arm to the left side of my head and creates an opening to land with a knee. It's important to note that you can throw the knee directly from your stance the instant you clear his arm, or step your leg back to generate more power for the strike. In either case, you want to execute the strike the moment you clear his arm. If you stall, your opponent will square his hips with your hips and defend against your attack. This is an excellent technique to utilize against fighters that keep a strong posture. To pull his head down and create an opening to attack, I maneuver my right arm to the right side of my opponent's head and then extend my arm upward until my elbow clears his neck. Once accomplished, I wrap my right arm around the back of my opponent's neck, forcing his head toward the mat. As I pull his head down, I reestablish control of his head in the Muay Thai clinch and throw a knee to his midsection. It's important to notice how I step my leg back and switch my stance before throwing the knee. The more space you create between your bodies, the more powerful the knee strike. You also have the option of throwing the knee directly from your stance. Although this isn't as powerful as the former, it is a lot faster to employ. In this sequence, I throw a stomp kick to my opponent's hips to create separation between our bodies. Once accomplished, I step my kicking leg back and throw a straight knee to his midsection. You also have the option of throwing the knee to your opponent's face. It's important to notice the positioning of my foot when I throw the stomp kick. I place my foot at a 45 degree angle, pointing my toes toward the outside of our bodies, and use my whole foot to push down on my opponent's hip. As I drive my foot into his hips, I pull down on his head with my grip. The combination of these actions forces his hips back and his head to the mat, creating an opening for the straight knee. This is another move that must be done fast. Throw the stomp kick, step your leg back, and then fire the knee. The faster you are at stringing these movements together, the better. This is another technique that allows you to create separation so that you can land with a straight knee. To begin, lift your knee toward your chest and thrust your hips forward, driving your shin into your opponent's near hip. At the same time, pull down on your opponent's head. When done properly, you will force your opponent's hips back and his head to the mat, creating a perfect opening to land with a straight knee. When you throw the straight knee, you can either drop your leg straight to the mat and then throw the knee with your opposite leg, or you can bring your foot back into your stance and throw the knee using the same leg. Choosing which option to employ largely depends upon the situation. If your opponent takes a deep step back as you drive your shin into his hips, then the former is a better option. If he doesn't retreat backwards, or he takes a small step back, then the latter is your best bet. It's important to notice how I pull my opponent's head down as I drive my shin into his hips and then again when I throw the knee. By ripping his head down in this manner, I keep his base broken and prevent him from defending against my attack. As you now know, in order to land with a knee from the clinch, you first have to create an opening to attack. In this sequence, I accomplish this by stepping my foot forward and to the outside of my opponent's stance. Then, I slide my other foot across the mat while pulling his head in the direction of my step. 
This forces my opponent off balance and allows me to land with a clean knee strike. As you can see, this technique can be executed from either side. Ideally, you want to keep your opponent off balance by switching your direction each time you land with the technique. For example, if you pull him to your right and land with a right knee, then you want to step your right foot to the mat and immediately pull him to your left. Just as he steps to counterbalance his weight from your first attack, use his energy to your advantage and pull him in the other direction. Pulling your opponent's head in the direction of your turn is the most important aspect of this technique. To execute this maneuver correctly, you have to use the momentum of your turn to pull your opponent's head down. The technique is subtle. I am pulling with one hand while pushing with the other. To help you better understand this concept, imagine his head as being a small steering wheel. In order to make the wheel turn, you have to use one hand to pull down on the wheel while using the other to guide it in the direction of the pull. Remember, wherever his head goes, his body will follow. Now I will show you how to break your opponent's posture to set up a side knee. To begin, maneuver one of your collar ties to the opposite side of your opponent's head. With both of your hands positioned to one side of your opponent's head, use both of your arms to drive his head down and to the side. As you break his posture, throw a side knee to his midsection. When executing this technique, it is common for your opponent to pull his head up to avoid having his posture broken. If faced with this scenario, then use his energy against him by switching your grip to the other side of his head. As he attempts to counter your first move, you'll already be transitioning to your second attack. In this sequence, I step my lead leg behind me and switch my stance while pulling my opponent's head down. To avoid having his posture broken, my opponent takes a step forward and switches his stance. The moment he does this, I drive the knee of my rear leg down into the front of his thigh. Notice how this hyperextends his knee. Timing is a critical aspect of this technique. You want to land the knee as your opponent shifts his weight onto his lead leg. Notice how I drop my knee down into his thigh using the weight of my body. This forces his knee to buckle and hyperextend. Once you cause damage with the strike, a plethora of attacks will become available. This is another effective off-balancing technique that can be utilized from the Muay Thai clinch. To begin, step your leg deep between your opponent's legs. With your leg serving as a barrier, use your head control grip to pull his body over your blockade. For instance, if you step your left leg between your opponent's leg, then you want to pull his head to your right. The combination of these actions will force your opponent off balance and create a perfect opening to land with a knee. As with most of the techniques from the clinch, executing these movements in one fluid motion is mandatory. The step and the pull should be done simultaneously, and the knee should follow and land before your opponent has a chance to recover his balance. If you step and then try to pull, then your opponent will step his leg around your leg and defend against your attack. It's important to note how I am controlling my opponent's head. I am pulling down with one arm while using my other to guide his head in the direction of the pull. In this sequence, I use an off-balancing technique previously demonstrated to set up two knees. The first knee I throw low to the inside of my opponent's leg. Notice how I time my opponent's step. As he plants his lead foot to the mat, I drive my knee to the inside of his thigh. This not only draws his attention to the lower half of his body, but it also disrupts his balance. Once accomplished, I immediately follow up with another knee to his midsection. It's important to note that you have the option of throwing both knees with the same leg, or alternating your knees by throwing one with each leg. Like most options, it is a matter of personal preference. As long as you string your strikes together in rapid succession, you should have no problem landing clean with your attack.
As I've already mentioned, sometimes it can be difficult to break your opponent's posture and pull him off balance to set up a knee strike from the Muay Thai clinch. The majority of fighters will realize the danger of the position and move to defend before you can implement one of the attacks demonstrated in the previous section. To help prepare you for this situation, I provided several counters to some of the most common escapes from the Muay Thai clinch, including the shoulder shrug escape, cross face escape, and hip block. In addition to demonstrating how to counter your opponent's defense to the Muay Thai clinch position, I've also included several methods for countering an opponent that tries to wrap his arms around your leg and secure the single leg position, which is a very common scenario in mixed martial arts competition. The key to being successful with the techniques that I demonstrate is to use your opponent's energy to your advantage and counter the moment that he executes his escape. If you don't know which technique to execute as a counter, or stammer before executing your counter, your opponent will most likely escape the position and turn the tables in his favor. To avoid this outcome, you want to drill the techniques in this section until they become instinctual. Once you get your timing down, try implementing them into a live clinch sparring scenario as demonstrated in the last section of this DVD. Here my opponent tries to escape head control by turning his body, pulling his head back, and shrugging his shoulder into my elbow. Instead of trying to maintain my grip, I cut my hand under his chin and extend my hands into his face. It's important to note that I am using the energy of my opponent's turn to my advantage. As he rotates his shoulders to free his head, I drive his face in the direction of his turn. This forces his head back and creates an opening to attack with a knee. As a general rule of thumb, I always like to throw the knee in the direction my opponent is turning. For instance, if he is turning his body towards his left, then you are going to throw a right knee. With his posture upright, his hands tied up, and his hips and shoulders rotated, his midsection is totally exposed. To capitalize on his vulnerable positioning, drive your knee right into his solar plexus. In order to escape head control, my opponent first has to create distance between our bodies. In this particular case, he attempts this task by maneuvering his arm underneath my collar tie and across my face. Once accomplished, he extends his arm into my face and drives my head back, a technique commonly referred to as the cross face. Before he can escape the position, I reposition my collar tie to the opposite side of his head, latch onto his bicep with my free hand, and throw a knee to his midsection. It's important to notice how I move my upper body in the direction that my opponent is pushing. Remember, you always want to take the path of least resistance. If your opponent has his left hand positioned to the left side of your face and is driving your head towards your right, then you are going to move your left hand to the left side of his head while tilting your body towards your right side in the same direction he is pushing. As you lean your body to the side, pull his head down using your reverse collar tie and throw a knee to his abdomen. When executing this step, it's also important that you control your opponent's cross face arm by latching onto his biceps. This will prevent him from dropping his guard and using his arm to block the knee. This is another effective technique that can be used to counter the crossface escape. As you already know, your opponent's goal is to create separation between your bodies so that he can escape his head. To prevent him from accomplishing this, circle around to the side of your opponent's body while pulling his head in the direction of your turn. When timed correctly, he will be forced to counterbalance his weight with a couple of steps. As he moves to correct his stance, drive a knee into his stomach. It's important to note that you can pull him in either direction. If he has his right arm positioned on the right side of his head, then you can use his energy against him by pulling him towards your right side, or you can capitalize on his trapped arm by pulling him toward your left. The most important thing with this technique is to execute the off-balancing maneuver before your opponent extends his arms into your face. If you stammer for a split second and allow him to extend his arm into your face, then this technique will not work. To 
prevent you from landing with hard knee strikes, a lot of guys will place their hands on your hips and straighten their arms. With their arms extended, it is difficult to thrust your hips forward and close the distance to land with the knee. When faced with this scenario, release your grip on your opponent's head, slide one arm to the inside of your opponent's arm, and then swing your arm to the ceiling while circling around to his back. Circling around to your opponent's back as you elevate your arm is mandatory. If you lag or separate the step into two movements, then your opponent will wrap his arm over your underhook arm and cinch down with his overhook to neutralize your counter. Once you circle around to his back, you can immediately get your offense going with an attack. In this sequence, I throw a straight knee to my opponent's sternum. As I land with the strike, he wraps his arms around my leg, collapses his chest over my thigh, and secures the single leg position. Before he can haul me to the mat with the single leg takedown, I straighten my trap leg and sink my hips back. This creates distance between my knee and my opponent's body. Utilizing the space created, I bump my hips forward and drive my hips into a solar plexus. It's important to notice how I use my arms to pull my opponent's head down into the knee. This not only disrupts his balance, but it adds power to the strike. It's important that you don't let your opponent control your leg. The longer you let him hold on to the control, the better his chances at securing a takedown. If your opponent doesn't release your leg after you land with the knee, then executing the single leg escape as a means of freeing your leg is an excellent option. To see this technique, skip to the last technique in this section. This is another technique you can utilize when your opponent catches your knee and secures the single leg position. To execute this technique properly, position both of your arms to the side of your opponent's head. For example, if he is controlling your right leg, then you are going to position both of your hands to the left side of his head. Next, push his head away and toward the mat. This will strip his base and prevent him from executing an attack from the single leg position. As you drive his head downward, push off the mat with your grounded leg, leap into the air, and smash your knee into your opponent's face. It's important to note that as I elevate my knee, I scissor my legs and kick my trapped leg toward the mat. Because my opponent is holding on tight to my leg, this motion pulls my opponent's head into the knee, increasing the power of the strike. If you land clean with the knee, then he will most likely release his grip on your leg. Now I will show you how to escape your leg and set up a knee when your opponent secures the single leg position. To begin, maneuver your trapped foot to the outside of your opponent's far leg. If he's controlling your right leg, then you want to position your right foot to the outside of his right knee. Once accomplished, straighten your leg and extend your foot into his knee. When done correctly, you will hyperextend his knee and force his hips back, which will cause his head to drop toward the mat. With his base broken and his grip weakened, Place your hands on the side of his head and push his face to the mat while sprawling your leg. The moment you free your leg and plant your foot to the mat, immediately follow up with a knee to his face. If your opponent manages to wrap his hands around the back of your head to secure the Muay Thai clinch, it is in your best interest to escape as quickly as possible. If you linger in the position, your opponent will most likely pull your head down, rip you off balance, and land clean with an attack. To prevent this sort of outcome, make sure to keep your neck tight and transition to your escape the moment he wraps his hands around the back of your head. 
If for whatever reason your escape fails, transition to another escape, and then another escape until you free your head from your opponent's control. In addition to demonstrating several highly effective escapes, I will also show you how to use the opening created by your escape to your advantage by transitioning into an attack. In this particular section, I focus on countering with a knee. In the next section, I demonstrate how to execute an escape and then counter with an elbow attack. This technique is similar to the previous technique in that you are extending your arms into your opponent's body to create distance and free your head. But instead of throwing one arm over and the other arm under your opponent's collar ties and placing your hands on his chest, you are going to maneuver both of your arms over the top of his arms and place your hands on his chin. Once accomplished, drive your hands into his chin by straightening your arms. Not only will this force his head back, creating an opening to attack, but it will also nullify his control, which prevents him from pulling your head down. Because your arms are wrapped around the outside of his arms, there is a chance that his arms will become stuck. With his arms trapped and his posture straight, he will be unable to defend against your knees. Again, my opponent has control of my head in the Muay Thai clinch. To create an opening to escape, raise your hand to the ceiling and then drive your elbow down, positioning your elbow to the inside of your opponent's collar tie. Ideally, you want to drop your elbow into the crook of your opponent's arm. This will force his arm to bend, thereby weakening his grip on your head. As you drop your elbow into his arm, sweep your arm to the outside of your body. Notice how this creates an opening to his body. To capitalize, throw a side knee to his midsection. If you are throwing a left downward elbow, then you want to throw a left knee and vice versa. Note, sometimes your arms will get tied up with your opponent's arm as you drive your elbow down, while in other cases, your arm will slip right through. If faced with the former, throw the knee the moment you run into resistance. If faced with the latter, then sweep your arm out to the side while following up with the knee. In either case, you are escaping the position and creating a perfect opening to attack. Now I will show you how to break the Muay Thai clinch using the crossface to arm lift technique. To begin, maneuver one arm underneath your opponent's collar tie, bringing it across his body and placing your hand on his far shoulder. Notice that my elbow and forearm is flush with my opponent's chest. I can now use this cross arm as a brace to prevent my opponent from pulling my head down and breaking my posture. Next, grab the elbow of his opposite arm with your free hand and push it toward the ceiling, maneuvering his arm to the opposite side of your head. Once accomplished, pull down on his shoulder while throwing a knee to his abdomen. Execute the shoulder shrug escape. Begin by wrapping both of your arms around the outside of your opponent's collar ties, locking your hands together on the back of his head. Then, drive your shoulder upward into your opponent's elbow while turning your body in the direction of the shrug. For instance, if you are elevating your right shoulder into your opponent's left arm, then you want to rotate your body in a counterclockwise direction. As you rotate your body, slide your leg across the mat and lean your head back slightly, allowing your opponent's arm to pass to the other side of your head. Once accomplished, drive a knee into his stomach. Ideally, you want to use this control to pull your opponent's chin down to his chest before you execute the shoulder shrug. However, this can be hard to manage, especially if your opponent has an exceptionally strong neck. If faced with this scenario, then don't worry, the technique will still work. As long as you have your hands wrapped around the back of his head, and you execute the movements explosively and in one fluid motion, you should have no problem pulling off the escape. Now 
Now I will show you how to strip your opponent's collar tie and secure an underhook to set up a side knee. To begin, I hook my left hand over the top of my opponent's right arm. Keeping my right arm down at my side, I drop my right shoulder toward the mat, turn my body in a counterclockwise direction, and then pop back up to my stance. Once I clear my opponent's left collar tie, I wrap my right arm underneath his left arm to secure an underhook. Now that I have control of my opponent's upper body, I pull down on his right arm with my left arm and throw a left side knee to his exposed abdomen. It's important to note that in order for this technique to work, you have to keep your head up and your posture straight. If there is any bend in your body as you dip your shoulder, then your opponent will use his control to rip you off balance. This is an excellent technique to employ in the later rounds of the fight when your opponent is sweaty or if he has a weak grip on your neck. If his elbows are pinched tight together and he has a strong hold on your head, then executing one of the other techniques in this section, such as the shoulder shrug escape, is a better option. This is another effective way to break your opponent's grip on your head to set up knee strikes. To execute this technique correctly, wrap your arms around your opponent's arms and grip your hands together. Keeping your hands locked tightly together, drive both of your arms downward into your opponent's arms while pinching your elbows together. It's important to note that I am drawing my hands into my body and driving my forearms into the crook of my opponent's elbows. The combination of these actions not only forces my opponent's grip apart, but it also momentarily pins his arms to my chest. With my opponent's arms trapped, I am free to follow up with a couple of side knees to his abdomen. Again, my opponent is controlling my head from the Muay Thai clinch. To nullify his hold, I maneuver my right arm underneath his left arm and hook my right hand over the top of his right arm. Then, I place my left hand on my right hand, elevate my right elbow toward the ceiling, and dip my left shoulder to the mat. As I lean my upper body slightly to my left, I push down on my right hand with my left hand and throw a left knee to his side. Notice how my opponent's arms are extended. This makes it very difficult for him to pull on my head or yank me off balance so that he can set up a strike or takedown. This technique won't break your opponent's lock on your head, but it will nullify his hold and create an opening to land with a side knee. Here I am doing several things at once. I hook my right hand over the top of my opponent's left arm and pull down. At the same time, I latch onto his right elbow with my left hand and punch it skyward. As I elevate my left arm to the ceiling, I step my left leg back and then throw a left knee to my opponent's side. When executing this technique, it's important that you throw the knee to the same side as the arm you are elevating. Also, like most techniques executed from the clinch, it's imperative that you execute these steps in one fluid motion. This is another option that you can utilize to set up knee strikes when your opponent is controlling your head in the Muay Thai clinch. To begin, bring your left arm over your opponent's right arm and secure the crossface position by wedging the outside of your left wrist underneath his neck. Once accomplished, maneuver your right arm over the top of your left arm and to the right side of your opponent's head. At the same time, sweep your arm into the right side of your opponent's head, forcing his head to your right. Notice how I shrug my shoulders. This traps my opponent's arm to my head and prevents him from dropping his guard and defending the knee. To maximize the power of the knee, I pull my opponent's body down into the knee. Although this technique won't break your opponent's grip on your head, it will nullify his control and create openings to attack. If 
your opponent wraps his hands around your head to secure the Muay Thai clinch, then executing this technique to escape is an excellent option. To begin, maneuver one arm over the top of your opponent's arm, placing your palm flush against his chest. As you do this, bring your other arm underneath his other arm and place your hand over the top of your opposite hand. Then, extend both of your arms, driving your hands into his chest while leaning your upper body slightly back. When done properly, you will force your opponent's grip apart and free your head. Once accomplished, you can disengage from the clinch or immediately follow up with an attack. This section is similar to the previous section in that I demonstrate several ways to escape the Muay Thai clinch position and then show how to use your escape to your advantage by transitioning to an attack. But instead of countering with knees as I did in the previous section, I show you how to counter with elbow strikes. Other than the counter used, the concept of this section is the same. You always want to transition to your escape the moment your opponent gains control of your head and use the openings the escape creates to transition to an attack. Now I will show you how to set up an elbow using one of the previous techniques. Again, my opponent has his hands wrapped around my head in the Muay Thai clinch. To create an opening to attack, I maneuver my right arm underneath my opponent's left arm, cut my right palm underneath his chin, and drive my hand upward into his chin. As I force my opponent's head back, I rotate my hips in a counterclockwise direction and drive my right elbow upward into his chin. It's important that you control your opponent's opposite arm with your free arm. This will prevent him from using that arm to defend against the elbow. In most cases, your opponent will resist your upward pressure being applied to his chin. When you release the control on his chin, the pressure will be released and his head will snap forward, increasing the power of the elbow. Having already shown you how to use the crossface to set up a knee strike, I will now show you how to use this highly effective technique to set up an uppercut elbow. To secure the crossface position, I wrap my left arm over the top of my opponent's right arm and wedge the outside of my forearm underneath his neck, positioning my hand on his left shoulder. Next, I straighten my left arm, driving my forearm into my opponent's neck and shrugging my left shoulder into my chin. This pins his right arm to my head and prevents him from blocking the strike with his arm. With his right arm trapped, I step my left leg back and create distance between our bodies. Having broken my opponent's control and created distance with my actions, I twist my hips in a clockwise direction and land an uppercut elbow to my opponent's chin. Like all the techniques I've shown you, it's imperative that you execute these steps simultaneously. If you stall between movements, a scramble will ensue and the technique will fail. Now I am going to show you an effective way to break your opponent's control on your head to set up a back elbow. The initial movement is similar to the shoulder shrug escape in that you are elevating your shoulder into your opponent's collar tie while rotating your body. But instead of ducking your head underneath your opponent's arm and circling around to his side, you want to swing your arm up and over to the opposite side of your opponent's head. Notice that when I do this, I not only break my opponent's grip on my head, but I reposition his left arm to the right side of his body. With his arm trapped, I reverse the direction of my turn and throw a back elbow to my opponent's face. It's important to note here that I am emphasizing the importance of clearing the control so that you can land with the back elbow. When drilling the technique, you should do it as demonstrated here. If you are in a fight, you definitely want to follow through with the elbow and immediately follow up on your attack. As 
you already know, if your opponent is controlling your head in the Muay Thai clinch, then your first order of business is to break the control. To begin this process, I maneuver my right arm underneath my opponent's left arm and then latch on to the top of his upper right arm. Next, I bring my left arm over our arms and lace it underneath his left tricep. Once accomplished, I push down on his right arm with my right hand while dropping my left elbow to the mat. As I chuck his left arm off my head, I redirect his left arm to the left side of my head using my left hand. With his arms crossed, I release my grip on his left arm and throw a left side elbow to his face. Remember, your main goal is to break your opponent's control. If there is an opening to land with the elbow, then you should take it. However, you should never let this distract you from your primary goal. This is another situation where I will implement the crossface technique to set up an elbow strike. Again, I am using the crossface technique to prevent my opponent from pulling my head down and breaking my base. Once I secure the crossface position, I weave my opposite arm to the inside of my opponent's collar tie and then wrap it over the top of his arm to secure an overhook. As I cinch down on my opponent's arm with the overhook, I throw an uppercut elbow to his chin with my crossface arm. You probably won't knock your opponent out with the elbow, but it will cause damage and create other attacking opportunities. At the very least, you will have broken your opponent's control on your head, which is your main objective. This is another variation of the arm lace technique. To set up this maneuver, bring your left arm over the top of your opponent's right collar tie and then hook your left hand underneath his left triceps. Then, push up on your left hand with your right hand, drop your left elbow to the mat, and sweep your left hand toward your left side. It's important to notice how I shift my left grip on my opponent's arm as I execute this movement. Before, when I initiated the arm sweep, my knuckles were flush with my opponent's triceps. Then, as I redirected his arm to my left side, I repositioned my grip so that I am cupping my hand over his left biceps. This control allows me momentarily to pin my opponent's arms so that I can land with the downward elbow. Notice that I drive the point of my elbow downward into my opponent's temple. It's important to note that you also have the option of throwing the side elbow. Now I am going to show you how to neutralize your opponent's control with an inside pummel to set up the side elbow. To execute this technique properly, maneuver your right hand to the inside of your opponent's collar tie and latch on to the back of his head. As you secure a right collar tie on your opponent's head, weave your left hand to the inside of his right arm and slide your hand back. Notice how I elevate my elbow and reach my hand to the back of my ear. This is a crucial aspect of the technique. When done correctly, you will break your opponent's grip on your head with little to no effort. Not only that, but you can use the motion of your arm to sweep his arm to the outside of your body. With the side of his face exposed, step your left leg back and throw a side elbow to the right side of your opponent's face. Although it is difficult to see here, I'm actually pulling my opponent's head into the elbow using my collar tie. This is important. This will not only prevent him from backing away from the clinch, it will also increase the power of the elbow. Over-under position, or what is commonly referred to as the 50-50 clinch, is one of the most common tie-up positions in MMA. When you are tied up with your opponent in this position, you both have one underhook and one overhook. This makes it a neutral position because both of you have the same offensive and defensive options. In this section, I demonstrate how to transition into a dominant clinch position so that you can create openings for devastating knee strikes. To increase your chances at pulling off the subsequent techniques, you always want to transition to your attack the moment you arrive in this position. The longer you stammer in the position, the harder it will be to get your offense going. 
It's important to mention that although there are several takedowns that you can execute from the over-under position, this section focuses on creating openings to land knees. If you are interested in learning how to haul your opponent to the mat, check out the DVD devoted to takedowns and takedown defense. Here I am tied up with my opponent in the over-under clinch position. It is a neutral position because we both have one underhook and one overhook. In order to get my offense going, I first have to create separation between our bodies. I accomplish this by driving my right shoulder into my opponent's chin. As his head shoots back, I wrap my left hand around the back of his neck, position my elbow to the inside of his right arm, step my left leg back, and throw a left knee to his abdomen. This is an excellent technique to utilize if your opponent is stalling in the clinch. Because the over-under tie-up is a neutral clinch position, a lot of guys will relax in the position and attempt to recover. Before he can catch his breath, create space and land with a hard knee. Now I will show you how to land damaging knees to your opponent's abdomen from the over-under clinch position. To start, place your overhook hand on your opponent's far hip and straighten your arm. This will create space and prevent your opponent from closing the distance. As you extend your arm into your opponent's hip, step your leg back and fire a knee to his midsection. It's important to note that you can throw the knee with either leg. Also, you can string the knees together in rapid succession. Although this technique won't land you in a dominant position, it will allow you to land with a series of damaging knees, which in turn will create openings for other attacking opportunities. This is another way to set up the straight knee from the over-under clinch position. To begin, position your overhook arm to the inside of your opponent's near leg. Notice how this traps his left arm. With your right arm serving as a brace, maneuver your underhook arm to the left side of your opponent's head while sliding your left leg across the mat. As you maneuver your body, pull down on your opponent's head and throw a straight knee to his face. Because his left arm is trapped, he is unable to defend against the strike. In this situation, I bring my head back and secure a cross face with my left arm. Notice how I replace my right shoulder with my left arm. Executing this step with speed is mandatory. The chances are your opponent will be driving his weight forward. If you don't secure the cross face quickly, he will close the distance and nullify your attack. Once you've secured the cross face position, maneuver your free hand to the opposite side of his head, step your leg back, and fire a knee to his midsection. As I switch my stance to throw the knee, I relax my crossface arm and allow my opponent's momentum to carry him forward into the knee. A lot of guys feel safe in the over-under clinch because the position is neutral. Most guys will rest or simply wait for the other to attack so that they can counter. As a result, they will relax their arms and try to take advantage of this quick recovery period. This is an excellent technique to employ when faced with this all too common scenario. To set up the arm trap, slide the hand of your overhook arm down your opponent's arm and grab his wrist. Pushing his arm behind his body, wrap your underhook arm around his back and hook your wrist over his forearm. With his arm trapped, begin throwing knees to his body and head. It's important to note that you won't be able to hold on to this position forever your opponent will most likely squirm and wiggle his way out of the position the moment you trap his arm. For this reason, it's imperative that you land as many knees as possible before he scrambles out of the position. In 
this section, I demonstrate how to break your opponent's lock on your body when he manages to pummel his overhook arm to the inside of your underhook arm from the over-under position, or manages to drop underneath your arms from the Muay Thai clinch to secure a body lock. Obviously, it is better to avoid this position altogether, but you have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Like the escapes that I previously demonstrated, quickness is your key to success. The more time you give your opponent to tighten his control, the less chance you'll have at pulling off a successful escape. In addition to demonstrating several highly effective body lock escapes, I will also demonstrate how to capitalize on the opening with a knee. Again, quickness is key. The instant you break his grip, there will be a brief window of opportunity to counter. To make the most out of this opening, string your escapes together with the attack as if you were doing it as one fluid motion. Here my opponent has secured double underhook control. To break his lock and set up an attack, I place my hands on his hips, straighten my arms, walk my hips back, and throw a straight knee to his abdomen. It's important to notice how I explode through these movements in one fluid motion. That is the key. If you stammer in the position, then your opponent will most likely throw you to the mat. The best time to execute this technique is the moment your opponent establishes his grip. If you allow him to suck your body in tight, then creating distance and breaking his hold will be hard to manage. The instant he wraps his arms around your body, drive your hands into his hips, pinch your elbows in tight, and sprawl your hips back. Once accomplished, throw a straight knee to his stomach. Again, my opponent has secured the double underhook body lock position. If I don't act fast, he will haul me to the mat with a takedown. To prevent this from happening, I pull my left arm back, press my left hand flat against my side, and wedge it to the inside of my opponent's upper right arm. As I pummel my left hand to the inside of my opponent's right arm, I step back with my left leg to create distance. Once you nullify the lock by pummeling your arm to the inside of your opponent's underhook and create distance by stepping your leg back, you are free to follow up with a knee. It's important to notice how I wedge my hand between the gap of my opponent's shoulder and bicep muscle. Pummeling your hand to the inside of your opponent's arm probably won't break his grip, but it will nullify his hold and create an opening to land the knee. Notice how I place my opposite hand on my opponent's hip to maintain distance. This prevents him from closing the gap between our bodies, securing control of my hips, and hauling me to the mat with a takedown. This is another excellent way to break your opponent's body lock and create an opening for the straight knee. As you already know, anytime your opponent secures double underhook control, you always want to create distance by dropping your weight to the mat and sinking your hips back. If you allow him to close the gap, then he will tighten his hold on your body and haul you to the mat with a takedown. The instant your opponent throws his arms around your waist, drive your arms downward into the outside of his arms, like you are scissoring your arms. Most of the time, your opponent's grip will break the instant you drive your arms into his arms. If he manages to keep his grip intact, then grip your hands together and twist your upper body. As his grip breaks, cup your left hand underneath his left arm and pull his arm across your body. As you do this, secure a reverse collar tie by positioning your right arm to the right side of his head. Once accomplished, pull down on his head with your right hand while throwing a straight knee to his midsection. When it secures double underhook control, a lot of times he will bury his head between your shoulder and neck in an attempt to close off space between your bodies. If he has his head positioned over your right shoulder, then rotate your upper body in a counterclockwise direction and drive your right shoulder into the left side of his face. 
Notice how this repositions my opponent's head to my left and creates a small gap between our bodies. To capitalize, replace your right shoulder with your left hand by wedging your left arm underneath his chin and secure the cross face. Once accomplished, extend your left arm into your opponent's face to create more space between your bodies and throw a straight knee to his abdomen. This is another technique you can utilize to break your opponent's lock on your body and land with a knee. Again, the first step is to create space between your bodies. To begin this process, position your right hand to the inside of your opponent's left hip and extend your arm. This will prevent him from thrusting his hips into your hips to close off the space between your bodies. As you do this, cup his chin with your left hand and push his head upward while stepping your left leg back. This will break my opponent's lock on my body and create enough space to land with the knee. It's important to note that you can transition to the cross face as you throw the knee or maintain your grip on his chin. The choice is up to you. The most important thing is that you break your opponent's lock on your body. Once that is accomplished, then you can worry about landing with the knee. Here I employ a technique that I've already shown, but instead of throwing a knee, I'm going to show you how to set up the side elbow. To begin, you want to create distance between you and your opponent's body by dropping your weight and sinking your hips back. Before your opponent can close the gap, wedge your left hand underneath his chin and then extend your arm into his neck. With his head being pushed back with your cross face arm, your opponent will be unable to maintain his grip on your body. As his grip breaks, throw a right side elbow to the left side of his face. Remember, this is just another option that you can employ. The key is to escape the position and avoid the takedown by creating space. Once that is accomplished, you can follow up with an attack of your choosing. Once you've drilled all the techniques that I've demonstrated in this DVD, it's time to implement them into a live sparring situation. To get the most out of what sparring has to offer, it is best to focus on one position at a time. For example, if your goal is to develop effective attacks, you want to secure the Muay Thai clinch on your opponent and have him resist. Based on the energy he feeds you, you transition to the appropriate attack. If your goal is to quicken your defensive reactions, have your opponent secure the Muay Thai clinch on your head. As he works to break your posture and land an attack, you work to escape your head and counter with a knee or elbow. Continue with this strategy until you get the hang of the techniques and develop your timing. Once accomplished, start implementing the aforementioned scenarios into a free sparring situation where you and your opponent have an equal opportunity to attack or defend. If you are having trouble with a specific position or technique during your free sparring session, you can always take a step back and practice the position or technique in the form of a drill. Remember, in order to pull off a technique in a live situation, you have to program your body to react off instinct, and that can only be accomplished through countless hours of drilling. Here I am demonstrating a basic pummeling drill. To perform this drill correctly, secure a collar tie with your right arm and have your opponent secure a collar tie with his right arm. Then slide your left hand to the inside of his right arm and around the back of his head, stripping him of his control. Because your opponent also wants to secure head control, he is going to do the exact same thing on your right side. The process is then repeated until one of you achieves your desired goal, which is to secure head control. Executing this drill is an excellent way to develop timing and sensitivity while fighting from the clinch. Remember, you always want to position your arms to the inside of your opponent's arms. Because your opponent has the same goal, it's imperative that you become a master at the pummel. You want to do this drill until the movements become instinctual. Once you get the hang of the basic movements, you can start sparring off the pummel to see who can get the dominant position. Whoever can get their arms positioned to the inside to secure head control will have the upper hand. Here 
I am combining the attacks previously covered into a free flow sparring scenario. Notice how my opponent is not fighting back. Instead, he is allowing me to flow from one position and one technique to the next at my own discretion. This type of drill is key to developing your offensive game. If you want to be a good clinch fighter, then you must practice stringing your attacks together in combinations. Remember, no technique works all the time. The more attacks you can chain together, the better your chances at finding an opening that can be exploited with an attack. To execute this drill, have your opponent wrap his hands around your head to secure the Muay Thai clinch. The moment he secures the position, immediately execute one of your counters previously demonstrated. Try to execute as many different counters as possible. To reap the full benefits that this drill has to offer, I recommend going at a light pace and keeping the resistance low. Notice how I immediately work my counter the instant my opponent latches onto my head. Efficient with the techniques covered in this DVD, you have to apply the moves you learn into a sparring scenario. Otherwise, you will never learn how to perform the techniques in a real combat situation. You have to react to the pressure your opponent is giving you and adjust your attack accordingly. To be a complete fighter, you must blend your offensive maneuvers in with your defensive techniques. Here my opponent and I are sparring back and forth. Both of us are searching for openings to attack. My goal is to work both my offensive and defensive games. Ideally, you always want to be on the offensive, but if my opponent should get the upper hand, then I immediately look to counter with one of the techniques shown. Studying and drilling the techniques is not enough. In order to develop the timing and sensitivity necessary for pulling off such maneuvers, you have to spar. Notice how I pummel for control, constantly try to secure control of my opponent's head, off-balance him, and pull him out of his stance so that I can create openings to attack. In addition to this, notice how I always fight to keep inside positioning. This is very important. Here I am sparring with my opponent from the over-under clinch position. The key is to move around with your opponent so that you can get a feel of what it will be like in a fight. Although my opponent is not resisting against my attack, he is feeding me pressure and moving around, just as he would if we were really fighting. The point of this drill is not to engage in a back and forth battle. Instead, you want to work the offensive techniques previously shown only with added resistance. In this sequence, I allow my opponent to secure double underhook control. The instant he secures the control, I immediately start creating distance and work my escape. Position sparring in this manner is the only way to develop the sensitivity and reactions that you need to pull off these maneuvers in a fight. 
If you just drill the individual techniques and don't take the time to position spar, then implementing the techniques will be hard to manage.